Hello, my name is Lola, and I'm going to react to The Pitiful World of Pixar Games by Cad Icarus. And, well, I like Pixar. I mean, the first movie that I ever saw of them was Toy Story. Then it just went on and on, you know. Watch, uh, what else did I watch? Like, almost all of them. The Incredibles, uh, Finding Nemo, uh... Wait, is that Pixar? Uh, probably. Oh. Anyway, uh, let's see what Caddy has to say here. Oh, and there's, do you want to like, comment, subscribe my channel? You can, or if you don't want to, it's fine too. I just do this for fun. Here we go. <laughs> Son? Sun? Sun? What? What? Why is there sun? What's going on? Uh, what? Huh. But this isn't right. The bricks outside can't be gone. Uh, I mean, we just got married. And they took my wallet! You know what? I don't believe you're gone. I reckon you're still out there. Uh, and I think once everybody's let their guard down, you'll pounce from your hiding place and crash down and flatten everybody. Oh damn, I forgot my- I'm one step ahead of there you, you Bricks! Go. Yeah, oh, you're not gonna catch me out, no way. Lockdown may be lifted, but I don't buy it for a second. No, you go and come around. I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm Pixar. Pixar is a digital animated movie studio that was directed by Pete Doctor and John Misconduct, and since the mid-80s has not only produced groundbreaking work that would influence computer graphics and film for the rest of time, but has also crafted many a brilliant film at the same time, some of my favourites being Toy Story 2, The Incredibles, Brave, Coco, and Ratatoing. Ah! Pixar is short for pictures... Ah, but that doesn't mean that pictures are the only thing that they've attached their name to. Even as early as their first animated feature, Toy Story, Pixar all of a sudden felt like a farmer the size of a house and were ready to sear their brand onto every submissive cow that wanted to be milked. And one of those cows was video games. Yes, just like with DreamWorks Animation Studios, the very second that Pixar saw any ounce of success, which just so happened to be with their first ever movie, the video game tie-ins were sure to follow, ready to milk all of the kids. Actually, no, no, that sounds uh. really bad. Don't milk kids. And today I'm gonna look at a load of them. Mm. A, a metric butt ton of them. I'm not even kidding. Look, I've got like, I've got like 23 of these. Look, I've got, I'm drowning in Pixar games. You, 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 I don't know you what. To be honest though, I have higher hopes for these games going into them than with DreamWorks. Not only because Pixar have a higher batting average of good films, but also a higher batting average of good games. At least from what I've played anyway. In the distant past on this channel, I've taken a look at three Pixar games and I thought they were all pretty great. A Bug's Life on PS1, despite what critics that probably don't wash say, I think is a great time. A stage-by-stage -stage collectathon and enemy hunting game with decent visuals, decent controls and incredible music. I mean, it's as good as one could expect from a game about sticky insects that stand in place and turn into an electric toothbrush. <laughs> Even better, at the end of the game, you get to chase down and stop Kevin Spacey from touching everyone inappropriately. How about Toy Story Racer? Another great PS1 game and one of the most underrated kart racers of all time, if you ask me. With some of the smartest and most unique track designs ever, mixing with bouncy controls that feel exactly like you're messing around with an RC car. And of course, there's my personal favourite, Toy Story 2, which is basically if Mario 64 was thrown into the Toy Story universe with ingenious open levels to explore, tight responsive controls, badass power-ups, tricky challenges, amazing music, and and a rapid fire super laser. Whoa. Also, Buzz looks like a bloody potato. Who infinity and be the other 19 <laughs> games though, I've never touched before. So let's touch them. And while we're talking mm -hmm. about Toy Story, why don't we start off with the first ever Pixar game that was ever released, which is nowadays infamous for the weird as hell graphics, the uncanny environments, and really weird blocky gameplay. Yeah, I'm going there. This Toy Story on the Game Boy. Yes, oh. remember this one? Toy Story 1 on the Game Boy? We can point and laugh at the SNES version all we want and mock the lack of Silicon graphics computers. But I thought it would be oh, way yeah, funnier to play the most primitive video game from Pixar at the time that it was released. Oh, God. This is more frightening than any horror game I've ever played. And you know what? I should have just stayed on the menu because as soon as the game starts, it gets worse. How do you put this diabolical waste onto a Game Boy? This! 
This is how you do it. If Donkey Kong was played by Tom Hanks and then got run over by a steamroller, you get Toy Story on the Game Boy. Oh my god, this is so rancid that there isn't even a word for it. The controls are really bloody loose as well, but hey, what are we even doing here? Because I, I don't know. As it turns out, the goal of level one is to find a bucket hidden in the stage, open it, and then watch it start shitting. After that, you head off to look for a radio and knock it down to the floor. Oh. Hey. Y you, you okay there, Ham? This is one of the most mangled things I've ever seen. Why didn't they just do their own art style instead of taking the entire SNES game's graphics and trying to squeeze it all into a creamy brick? Just look at this aggressive amount of green. It's hurting my eyes. Do we need to call child services? Does Andy live in mold? These controls, I can't even begin to explain them. They're just completely- Ah! What? That's it? The level's over. Woody, are you okay? D do I need to call an ambulance? <laughs> anyway, sorry, the controls. Yeah, I no. mean, I know you can't feel the controls watching this video, but I'm sure you can get the correct idea by just looking at this footage. This isn't Toy Story, it's Alien. Not just because of the green and black everywhere, but because we float around so much we must be in space. And no one can hear you scream. Just you try and do anything in this game. Just you try. Swinging by a grapple? Nope. Jumping upwards through platforms? Nope. Timing your jumps to pump a balloon at the right time to launch moving toys into a box? Nope. And can I just ask, what is it with this game and excrement? Rex, you look like a gnarled up turd, and I'm really not a fan of your running animation. In fact, all of the animations in this game are buggered. What's going on here? <laughs> why is Buzz swimming in midair, and why is he splayed and waiting oh, suggestively God. for me on the bed? Is it because I'm Woody? These levels go on forever, man. Look at this. How ridiculous is this? How big is Andy's room? Does he live in one giant corridor? What kind of kid is Andy anyway? Why does he have a million copies of the board game Drafts, and why is he obsessed with this single book called The Fish Man? Well, whatever kind of kid he is, he's the same kind of kid who thinks the alphabet goes Why, 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 why? Oh, by the way, did any of you guys ever see the posters for the SNES and Genesis versions of Toy Story? Well, if you thought the Game Boy version was horrifying enough, then I don't think you'll be able to cope with some of these posters from back in the day. Play the game! Okay! I'm sorry, Daddy! Well, that was horrible, wasn't it? So I suppose it's time for us to move on to the next game I'm going to be looking at. It's another Toy Story game, at least, so maybe it'll be a lot better. Uh, well, we'll see. Get ready, everybody, for Toy Story. <laughs> On the zizzle. What? Yeah. The Zizzle. What? You don't remember The Zizzle? It's a classic. No, it's not an overweight calculator. It's a video game system. And my god, is it a video game system? First off, it's called a Zizzle. That's not a game console. That's what a sausage does in a frying pan. Secondly, who designed this plastic shell? I remember I had a game like this. Uh... But I can't remember, like, what was it called? Like, man, I just can't remember. I can't... Uh, I'm trying to remember. And thirdly, where is the demon that they summoned after they good. designed it? Buzz looks like a burn victim, and Woody looks like he just survived Chernobyl. And this would be bad enough. But then you turn them around and look at them from the side. And these ugly skin grafts attached to this bulky chunk of plastic is not where the horror ends. Because you turn the thing on and... Select. Mission. It speaks. And oh boy, does it speak. Mission. On this so-called zizzle, you get a total of five missions to play, while holding the system with your left finger poking into Buzz's armpit. And as for Woody, we don't talk about Woody. <laughs> and this is what the missions are. Mission one, you move left and right to catch aliens. Mission two, you press one button to do a jump every so often. Mission three, you hold left and right while hitting two buttons to do high and low attacks against other toys flying towards you. Easily the most challenging and mechanically complex game on the Zizzle. Mission four, you move left and right to cross a busy road while avoiding cars. And mission five, in the saddest thing I've ever seen, all you do is scroll through four things you can make Buzz do and press a button to make him do them. You can put his helmet on and take it off, fire mm. his laser, open up his wings, and make him talk. This mission clearly only exists for those poor saps of kids that weren't lucky enough to get an actual Buzz Lightyear toy back in the day. This was their substitute. Don't worry kids, you don't need any of this. You've got the Zizzle. It's basically the same thing. Why did you do that? Oh, you... 
Well, you know what? This was worse. Okay, then hopefully I can feel a bit better after I revisit a game I replayed countless times as a kid. Monsters, Inc. Scare Island on the PS2. This is, in fact, the same game as the PS1 Monsters, Inc. game that I know a load of people played when they were younger. I think it was called Scream Team. But to be honest, I never played that one, and I didn't even know it had a PS1 version until I got a demo disc for it long after I finished the PS2 version. It's the same game, essentially. It just looks better and runs smoother. But better graphics or not, God help me, it doesn't do much for Scare Island. Water News looks like a raisin, and Sully here has more teeth than face. Welcome to Monsters Incorporated! Onto the training mode then, and who do I pick? Well, based entirely on the way that they walk, I'm not a fan of Sully's extending stretchy neck, so I guess I'm gonna have to pick Mike. Bugger! I think I made the wrong choice. I wonder what happens if you pick Sully. Hey, hey, I'm the monster! Oh, you are? I didn't notice. This training mode sucks, no other word for it. I get that it's a tutorial to ease younger players into the game, but this goes on for way too long, since each room of the stage goes over every individual move you have. There's a room for jumping, and a separate room for double jumping. That's how redundant this whole thing is. And in every single room, you get to listen to Roz talk at you. And after a while, she starts to sound like a massive sneeze. <laughs> so we get out of the training mode, and into the actual stages, which are free roaming 3D environments with sub areas you need to unlock and edges you can't cross. The game itself is kind of like a Mario 64 collectathon mixed with Ape Escape, but for babies. You run and jump around, attack enemies, and collect this stuff called ooze in order to fill up a meter. After you've filled it up enough, you then go on the hunt to catch these robot children. Thank the Lord we're not hunting real children. And if they're the same color as the meter point that you filled up to with the ooze, you can adequately scare them. Scare enough of them, and you clear the level. Well done. Unlike Ape Escape, though, where searching for these escaping targets and catching them is fast-paced, reaction-heavy, there's usually platforming or puzzle-solving to get around, and it takes one swipe to grab them afterwards as a nice payoff, Monsters Inc. instead just places the kids everywhere in not very difficult locations, and then forces you into a button-mashing scaring game every single time you find one of these things. And the higher colour level they are, the more button-mashing you have to do. This gets immensely tiring insanely quickly. There's nothing fun about this, and not rewarding even slightly for finding these things in the first place, because you don't just get to pack yourself on the back and move on like an ape escape, you have to stop dead in your tracks and mug. To be fair though, it is funny once or twice to see some of the final scaring animations. In fact, while we're here, was I the only person in the world that thought it was completely backwards in the movie that Sully was considered the scary one and Mike was considered the funny one? This thing is freakish. Why aren't kids scared of him? Look at him! The worst that Sully can do in this game is... Okay, fair enough, he's pretty scary. The facial animations aren't the only things I'm not too sure about on the production value, though. It's all over the place throughout the game. Check out these water physics. It looks like they're trying to escape the game. Sometimes the models look absolutely fine, and sometimes they make me want to off myself. And they oh, also God. reuse the same victory animations for the monsters when they grab the main metal collectibles of the game, which is fine, but these animations are in sync with one specific line of dialogue, and the characters say different lines for different medals. So where this is perfectly fine... Not bad for a guy with one eye! This just looks dumb. Who's the Monster! <laughs> I'm sorry, how does it go? Who's the monster? With the knife! For a nice bit of replayability, as you go through the game, you unlock more tools to use to access areas you couldn't get to before. And if you quit a level, thankfully, the amount of ooze and other collectibles you got on the level is stored, making the dashes towards the final collectibles and children to scare much easier. And check this out, you even get to race Randall as a makeshift boss battle, and these bits are really fun, I'm not gonna lie. Hey, you're more of a challenge than I thought. Yeah? Well, you're more tooth than I thought. Mm. I'm getting restless now. I want to go outside. The weather's lovely out there. I, imagine what I could do. I could uh, run through the hills or um, fly a kite. Now why would you want to do that? Oh, what did I eat last night? You've already got a kite, Caddy. I'm here. You're not what I had in mind. Fly me, cats. Fly me. Can you please calm down? I need wind. Well, what do you want me to do? Blow on you? Please, anything yeah. will do anything. I just want to feel alive again. Oh no, the kite turned into Finding Nemo on the GameCube. My first impressions with this game are not all that bad, actually. This visual design is very appealing. I mean, this was made by Traveller's Tales, who have been known for quality when it comes to Pixar games. And the first level of this game is... Going to school. Gee whiz, Papa Bear! We start the game off with a cutscene from the movie featuring a child physically assaulting his father. Come on, this is cool. And then we get to swim around like nothing ever happened. It's just our little secret. Why should we swim over to that coral? Why don't you try to swim through all those rings of bubbles on the way? Oh. I, re I remember my first day of school. 
and my dad asking me that? We get to see the two main types of gameplay here. Side-scrolling linear segments with a few side paths to explore, and on-rail swimming segments with obstacles to avoid. We aren't given much time in these parts, though, before we're introduced to some more characters. Hi, I'm Chad. I'm obnoxious. Hey there, Nemo. Nice to meet you. I'm a twat. This game takes you through the events of the movie in a style very similar to the underwater segments from Crash 3. In fact, finding Nemo in this sense reminds me a lot of the Shark Tale game, except it doesn't make me want to kick my dog. Luckily, this is uh -oh. ten times better in terms of controls and mechanics, and Finding Nemo doesn't try to do a million different gameplay styles at once, making it more focused, easier to understand, and way more enjoyable. The presentation, though, is the best bit. There's all these neat attentions to detail, like being able to dive out of the surface of the water, which serves no purpose whatsoever, but you can just do it if you want to. And the character animations in general are pretty great, especially when you're performing a certain move. Although I don't like it when Marlin tries to kiss me, I'm not a fan of that. <laughs> these good visuals, though, come at a cost. A high cost at that. Like... 15 pounds. This is one of the worst performing games I think I've ever seen, and I've played Shrek Extra Large. <laughs> I swear I can hear the GameCube practically catching fire trying to run this. If we aren't careful, the fish in here might cook over and we can have them with chips. Look at this shit, it's terrible. The music though, damn, it's really good. In fact, for a level about <clears throat> going to school, it's surprisingly <laughs> epic. <laughs> This almost makes me want to learn. <laughs> oh, you made me eat! Don't ever say that to me again. Each level has you yeah, doing a few uh. different missions while getting to the end, similar to how A Bug's Life on PS1 handled it. And look at that, it was the same developers, aren't I a dick? I have severe panic anxiety. Some of these missions are collectathon related, some are based around finishing mini games in a certain way, like winning a race or something, and whenever you complete them, they all end like this. <laughs> I mean, in comparison to other Disney Traveler's Tales games, this is way too simple. This is an easy kids game, but it isn't the worst thing ever. I just wish it ran better. Or should I say, swam better. Mm -hmm. ah. Ooh. Ooh. Eh. Ooh. Ah. You live in what kind of home? In an amenema. You live in an enema? Do we need to remove it? It controls good, it looks good, the soundtrack is incredible for missions that are so mundane, but I can't keep playing this. The performance is worse than the last time I was in bed. It makes most of what you do practically unplayable, so I think I'll end things off with a glitch where I ended up winning a starfish by dying. Yay! I, I, I dig it! You are now dreaming. Nice, isn't it? Wanna know why? Because this dream is sponsored by ExpressVPN. You know what I've been doing oh, a lot during God. lockdown? Sleeping. And while I'm sleeping, I have nightmares. Nightmares about this man. What's he doing? He's hacking your mainframe. God damn. Well, where, how are we going to stop this? Well, with ExpressVPN. And VPN stands for... Violet, please, no! ExpressVPN is a service that encrypts and protects your online data to keep you completely safe whenever you browse, shop, or game online. And it's one that I've been using for as long as I can remember. Not only for creating a barrier between myself and malicious people trying to get access to my information, but for unlocking region-locked videos on YouTube, Netflix, and countless other sites. Did you know that I live in Venezuela? Well, I don't, but you can use ExpressVPN to pretend that you do. Your IP address is then safe, your passwords are safe, and your wallet is safe. Just go to the description below to expressvpn.com forward slash caddy, and you can find out how to get three months of this incredible service for free. Yes, for free. You can pretend that you're in freezing cold Canada for three months. Actually, speaking of freezing cold... Kids, I found dinner! Huh? Oh, How did these get in here? Mm -hmm. <laughs> this here is The Incredibles on the Xbox and Game like Boy Advance. Know. Two know. more games from my childhood, both of which were published by Thick, and games which I poured hours into. I was obsessed with them. In fact, I was also obsessed with the movie. I was 10 years old when it came out, and as a huge fan of Spider-Man, I hadn't seen a relatable superhero story told like this before. It captivated me. You remember Buddy? Yeah, yeah, that was me, but with a movie. 
and not a man shaped like a pizza slice. And when it comes to Incredibles games, let's start with the GBA version. I never actually owned this one until recently, because back in the day I borrowed it from my cousin multiple times and finished it over and over again while my sister had this Monsters Inc. game on GBA that I barely ever played. Was that any good? Please let me know in the comments and I won't read them. The Incredibles on GBA is a 3D beat-em-up with 2D graphics that are pretty damn stylish all things considered, but if you want to consider all things, you'll quickly notice how shallow, empty, repetitive and bland this game is at its rotten little apple core. You have special moves, you can dash, you can jump attack, you have combos, but none of this means anything when your approach to every single situation is the same over and over again, which is then topped off by the enemies being copied and pasted exactly the same over and over again. By the way, these guns, yeah, they're not fun to deal with, they can get stuck. <sighs> Hang on, wh what is this old woman doing hanging out on the roof of a skyscraper? Oh, what's that? This guy's gonna jump to his death? Well, if this face was coming at me, I'd want to jump too. <laughs> Incredibles on the GBA is a distraction at best and boring at worst. You can't even save your progress and can only use passwords. Yes, in 2004, this is pretty pathetic. Wait, wait, wait. How did they get away with that as a password? <sighs> and now we're onto the Xbox version, clearly and obviously the better game between the two, and the one that I spent the most time on as a young'un. You get to do all the things that superheroes do, like beat up bad guys, roll around in a force field ball at a million miles an hour to knock down guards and solve physics puzzles, turn invisible, try to get sticky bombs off of capes without actually trying to get the sticky bombs off of capes, race the school bus to school in the middle of broad daylight when you're supposed to be hidden undercover, save all of the civilians that look like ducks, and get to the scene of the crime just in time for your chin to save the day. Just like the GBA version, this is a beat-em-up game, but just way more varied, interesting, explorative, and there's more powers to use, more platforming, and I mean, it's on the Xbox, look at it. You also get to crush people under steel girders in a kid's game. <laughs> The game looks pretty uh, good for an Xbox title, <laughs> y you know, except for Mr. Incredible's crouching animation. <laughs> and, for some reason, there are quite a lot of graphical oddities and texture glitches in this game. The cars have metal nipples. Maybe it's because I'm playing this on the Xbox 360, but I don't know, man. Some of these things just feel like they're part of the game to me. Let's take a look and see what's on the other side. Oh, don't worry, Elastigirl, I know what's on the other side. Your husband's deconstructed face! <laughs> This is the greatest graphical bug I've ever seen, and it's absolutely terrifying. Not only does the wall dress up as Mr. Incredible, but the floor does, and even entire skyscrapers. Look at this! I know Mr. Incredible is big, but he's not that big. Sadly though, for as much as I loved this game as a tot, especially the Violet and Dash ball rolling stage, it can be pretty tiring in places. The combat is nothing special at all, and there's way too many grouped enemy encounters that require standing around and waiting for more waves to appear before you can move on. And with instances like these battle tank mini bosses, the amount of waiting you have to do just to get an attempt to hit them one time out of three is agonizing. But it's okay, because with the cheat code SASS mode, you can jack up the speed of the game to 300% and make it utterly unplayable. But at least waiting isn't a problem anymore. Speaking of speed, the best bit of the game will always be the fact that you can control a speeding child and get run over by cars. Yes, I did it! Average speed, 147 miles per hour, I ran for 13 miles, and I burned... 187 calories. I did all of this, and burned off the same amount of calories as a Kinder Egg. Exercise is a lie. But don't leave your seats just yet, you can run into that moving truck anytime you want, because right now... We haven't even pierced the skin of the cream. Did you know that before the Incredibles 2 movie released in 2018, there was another Incredibles 2 that was actually treated like the official canonical sequel to the original movie called Rise of the Underminer, for the Xbox. Look, I personally love the movie, but no matter how you felt about the sequel that we eventually got, I think Dog Sick would have been better than this game. But hey, at least we get to play as Frozone this time, which is great because he finally found his super soup! This is a two-player linear 3D beat-em-up once again, with the single-player mode allowing you to switch characters whenever you want, and the first level of this game shows you absolutely everything you are going to be seeing and doing for the next four hours. Production-wise and gameplay-wise, it's all spread on you right here like an invasive swab test in the first stage, and it never gets any better or changes even remotely as it goes on. You hit robots in brown and grey tunnels with basic attacks and occasional special attacks, you hit robots in brown and grey tunnels with basic attacks and occasional special attacks, and you hit robots in brown and grey tunnels with basic attacks and occasional special attacks. Sorry to be redundant just to make a point, but this game doesn't seem to have a point, so I'm making up any point that I can. Just look at this. This is level one, and the most impressive the visuals get. And even then, it still completely ignores the laws of sound. It's raining boulders! Keep moving! You know what I'm gonna do? Uh... I'm gonna apologize to Crash of the Titans. I'm sorry. I thought that you were the most mind-numbing and tedious button masher I've ever played. But this? 
This is a stain in the pants of God! Sure, the basics of the game are the same as the first Incredibles, running, jumping, and attacking, but in comparison, this is soul-destroying. Unlike the first mm. game, you can't explore around these areas, there's no branching paths, you're outright punished for thinking outside of the box, and the upgrades mm. you can buy with XP points just end up making the same four moves you already do hit a little bit harder. Speaking of, do you like robots? Do you like these robots? Well, I hope you do, because they are everywhere from the start all the way to the end, shamelessly copied and pasted all over the place, and strategies to fighting them amount to hitting them very quickly, or sitting there like a dope and waiting for them. Oh, and also, when you play on your own, the partner AI is a little bit- uh... I got so <laughs> bored of this game that I actually ended up using cheat codes to unlock every level, just to see if things improve later on. And no, they don't. Believe it or not, I'm uh. not showing you the same level over and over again. Aside from, like, one ice level, every single stage is you fighting robots in a brown hole. Uh, yeah, I, mm. I, I'm gonna I'll put this game in my brown hole. <laughs> the Incredibles Rise of the Underminer. Why the hell is this game even called that? The Underminer never goes above the ground. He doesn't rise in this game. This should have been called the Incredibles Compass. At least the first <laughs> game, for as flawed as it is, allows you to discover secrets, do more platforming, solve puzzles, control multiple characters with different play styles and lets you smash up enemies. This is just running and punching over and over again. And if that wasn't enough, these robot villains that talk to you are some of the worst I've ever seen. Focus all these forces to reverse the poles and flip the whole planet. I was ordered to make 100 giant Gilgan bots. The skies will be filled with dirt and the sun will become a distant memory. Oh, sorry, I didn't realize you were talking. I was busy watching paint dry. By the way, why does your helmet have a hairy egg in it? Who cares? Because now we have an Xbox 360 game based on a movie where two female cars flash their headlights. <laughs> Rated E for wet. Make your friends eat your dust. Oh boy, I've always wanted to do that. <laughs> on my 12th birthday, I actually got Cars the video game on the PSP. And honestly, I remember liking it. Problem is though, this is not a port of the Xbox 360 version, so I'm gonna keep my expectations pretty low. Contains no sex. Oh. We start the game off with a dream <laughs> sequence where we have to do a race, because this is called Cars, and that is what cars do. They can't play chess. <laughs> and the racing mechanics here are... <laughs> they aren't the worst I've ever played, but I don't think I can call them good either. I mean, check out this power slide. Yes, that was me holding the slide button and steering at the same time. It's absolutely useless. Here is what power sliding is good for. Do you want to turn? Or do you want to turn? We finish off the dream and get an amazing idea to start up our own local Grand Prix because we're bored. He wants you to meet him out at Willy's Butte later? Excuse me, I am not going near anyone's Willy's Butte. The real game starts off and Mac is staring right up the back end of Lightning McQueen. Hey, idio, buddy -o. Oh no. I think he likes my Willy's Butte. <laughs> okay, apparently there's a hub world in this game? I wasn't expecting that at all. What the hell am I supposed to be doing in here? Help! Jesus Roadkill! What the hell, game? You said there was no violence! Well, hey, at least I can crash into Mater. That's all I've ever wanted to do. <laughs> this overworld system is downright bad. Check it. You need to drive around to find your next race, and if you want bonus points for some reason, you can collect these things here. But there are no guideposts anywhere, and the minimap does a pathetic job at not only showing you what kind of missions are available, but if you've even completed them or not. Leading me to do the exact same dream sequence race I already did by complete bloody accident all over again. And then I ended up mistakenly changing my look into a car dressed in 80s fitness spandex. Hey, if it's your thing, Godspeed. So I finally find my next race and I said out loud to myself, Wow! Because, ooh, these physics must have been sent to us by false gods. The controls here, despite driving on the dirt, are rigid and strained. There's no sense of slipping or sliding to your steering. It just feels like you're driving a bus all the time. Time. And yeah, did I mention the physics? Because they're here, and they're like a drunk auntie at the Christmas party that no one likes. This hub world, man, I can't describe how awful it is. Taking aside all the map issues and backwards roundabout mission selection system, it's empty, dull, muted in the colours, and I get it, it's a desert, but if it was going to be this bland, I would have preferred a selection screen. Especially since most of the races I did were mostly also set in the same goddamn desert. This adds nothing but wasted time to the game, and with so many awkward and cramped and tiny side bits to find items in, that's where you're really gonna feel the control struggle. Does it look like I'm having fun here? Look at the turning circle! I'm braking here too! Am I a race car or a satellite? Oh my goodness, hello! And then if you go into first person mode, you're able to turn the game into Resident Evil 7. This is uncanny and quite scary, especially when you crash. Uh, fine. <gasps> 
the movie The Video Game. You told me there was nothing provocative in here. What's with all of this bare chest? You know what? The <laughs> only single time I think the controls didn't suck was in this tractor tipping mini game where Major is controlled entirely with the analog stick. And it makes you wonder, how does this rusty tub of crap move this responsibly and yet the car whose job it is to drive around in circles can barely turn left? Oh god, what's this? A power slide tutorial mission. Thank the lord. Am I doing something wrong here? Please teach me. Nope! The game is just a stupid floppy, so I hope you don't mind, but I'm gonna leave right now before I go mad and kill someone. Yeah, did you know that Up had a video game tie-in? I didn't. And they made a version of it for the nut you can play with outside. And the game was made by... Ask Bozo Studio. Okay, so it's asking me for a name for my save file, but there's only so much I can put here because there's a three-letter limit, so... I don't know. My name is... Yum. We start the game off with some FMV sequences that don't look too bad. I reckon this could trick kids into thinking this was from the movie. But then we see Russell walking into the room like an upright vacuum cleaner and I'm immediately concerned. And as far as Carl goes, phew, he looks pretty bad. He definitely doesn't look like he does in the movie. He's a proper gilf there. But then again, I don't think I'd want to do that anyway. So... He's a good. Okay, somebody explain this to me. How does this guy, an ancient grieving pensioner, jump around like he's on a trampoline, climb up the sides of cliffs and Indiana Jones' his way across vines, yet he walks around like a crooked spider hungry for a dead bird? So yeah, ever wanted to play a game where you're an old man? Then up on the PSP is the game for you. And to be fair, it is pretty accurate if you wanted a cynical old fart simulator. You can play little competitive games with your kid and not let them win. Oh, what's that? You want to collect all the bugs? Well, I can smash them faster! And that's not all. You can ignore them as they cry for your help, run away from them as fast as possible so they can't keep up, and even push them into a load of spiky, jagged rocks. When you aren't doing that, you're playing the most basic partner-based puzzle platformer of all time that barely requires any thought. Um, Carl? Are you okay there, Carl? As for the mechanics and controls, well, they don't even work half of the time. Like here, I get captured by this trap, get told to spam X in order to escape, but it never ever works, and I end up losing health and resetting the puzzle every single time. What am I doing wrong here? Aside from that though, Up is painfully easy to the point of sleep inducing. I know this is only stage one, but this is a flat out depressing looking game. And when you start solving the- HANG ON A SECOND, RUSSELL! HOW DID YOU DO THAT?! We've got old men doing trapeze gymnastics, and a small child who can throw adults over their shoulders. Am I playing up or the Avengers? Now get your hopes up, kid. That rotten wood is never gonna be a canoe. Which is why I'm going to use it as a canoe right now. <laughs> Jeez, my god. When did this game turn into a government warning about steroid abuse? How is Carl doing this? This is ridiculous. I can practically hear his spine mangling. You tap X over and over again to move forward and try to fit through tiny gaps with water physics stopping you and crocodiles in the way. Yeah, I'm done. This game is way too dull for me, so I'm stopping. Sorry, Up. You made me feel down. Da, 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 bad joke! <laughs> ah, shut up. It was a better joke than naming your movie after a pun. Ratatouille. You get it? Cause he rat We start the game off and we have the worst loading screen I've ever seen. It's nothing but a static chef's hat that doesn't do anything. Come on now. It moved. Need to wash up before I handle the food. So I begin the game running around on all fours with my hands, jumping about, getting a feel for my surroundings, and then... <laughs> oh dear. You can't touch the... Milk. Oh my god, what's this? Is, is this a sniffing button? It is! It's a sniffing button! Who put this in the game? Who asked for a sniffing button? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so so far this game feels pretty aimless. I'm not exactly sure what I'm supposed to be doing. Oh wait, I get a reward for jumping on this handle? Awesome! Oh well... What a great reward! Death! Eh, I don't know. Is this the way I'm supposed to go? Ah, look at that. I got an achievement for jumping on a stump. You're one of those games, aren't you? So now it's time for me to tailspin these cans away. Okie dokie. <laughs> The sound design isn't the only problem I have with the presentation, though. What is going on with the floor here? It looks like the floor textures load as Remy runs towards them. Is this texture popping that follows your feet? I've got to carry on, though, so let's just do that. I'm being shown how to carry and place items now. That's pretty neat. The peppers explode. Where the hell am I? What kind of illegal weapon smuggling is this woman up to? Why do her slippers look like Christmas ham? And why does <laughs> Remy look like Oliver Twist? Please, sir, I want some more. <laughs> what do you think that jumping on jets of water sounds like. Ah! 
no, you're wrong. It sounds like this. Not to mention, <laughs> this is not a very polished platformer we have. I got stuck on grates all the time while climbing them, and mm. oh, oh my god, what is going on here? I'm not a rat anymore. I'm a hybrid between a slug and a sausage. I think I'm gonna be sick. <laughs> Okay, you know what? I'm convinced now. This old bag has some kind of gang operation running. A rat this size heading towards a window that fast would break it. Which must mean this is bulletproof glass. Why does she need it? Christ almighty! That's why! She's a murderer! She sells exploding peppers on the black market and buries snitches in her garden! This farm kingpin needs to be locked up! How am I so close to this woman's legs that I'm practically looking up her skirt, yet I'm not dying? And pray tell, why do I activate a mouse trap right here and brush it off like, ah, eh, I'm okay! But then the second the time any speck of loose gravel gets in my way, I trip over and fall flat on my face. Oh, that's reminded me. After I'm done with playing this game, I've got a great place we can go and get lunch. <laughs> nah, don't worry, you'll love it. Yeah, I've booked a table at Cafe Rat! After this tutorial segment, we then end up on the main game as we search around the city streets of Paris and collect a certain amount of items by jumping around in order to go back to earlier areas and unlock minigames to complete, and therefore progress through the game. You know what other game works like this? Yes, Shrek's Treasure Hunt on PS1, but now, instead of being a stinky ogre, you're a stinky rat. The minigames you have to work with are things like running around a spinning cylinder in the sky trying not to plummet to the earth, or running away on a turntable away from mechanical clumps of knives slicing vegetables at a million miles an hour, so yeah, nothing too traumatizing for kids. But then again, maybe Remy deserves it. Great! He's a bit of a psychopath. There's my restaurant! Well, hop it up it all! That there was the voice of the ghost of Chef Gusto, your guide through the city streets, and this game will make you remember that, because some genius in the dev team decided that he should repeat every single line of tutorial dialogue for every area and item you walk by each and every time you load in and out of a minigame. The compass can tell you where to find a mission Okay. Something more annoying to me than that though is the fact that the game itself, when you're just running and jumping around the area, isn't too awful. But it's completely mauled by tiny flaws that all group together into a nest of regret. It's little things like being able to climb up pipes being a mechanic, but not every single pipe. And things like balancing on tiny platforms with the action button giving you no indication it even worked until you actually land on it. It's not like in something like Sly Cooper where there's a little twirl or grapple animation after you press the button letting you know that everything is about to connect. You only know if your button press worked in Ratatouille if you land on the thing or fall straight through it. There's no clear timing and the actions are incredibly unresponsive. You've just got to mash the action button and hope that you land on the thing. And that's not fun. It's funny. Collect enough of these items and you'll be able to open a tall mission. Oh cool, thanks for letting me know. Collect enough of these items and you'll be able to open a tall mission. Yeah, don't worry, I heard you the first time. Collect enough of these items and you'll be able to- Are you gonna say that every time I pick up a couple of these things? Collect enough of these items- THERE'S 100 OF THEM! WHO PROGRAMMED THIS?! Is this necessary? No, it's not. Ah well, at least we can all agree that that is a good smelling place. <laughs> And so, I learned my lesson about buying bad Pixar games, and decided to pick up Cars 2 on the Xbox 360! Fantastic. Real good fun. <sighs> Where's my gun? The intro cutscene for Cars 2 shows us a rip-roaring chase sequence that's a funny, fun, fun, fun time for the whole family, and it ends with a cute little crash where a group of cars pile on top of each other and explode. Cars 2 begins with literal car genocide. They have thoughts and feelings, they have souls, and they are dead now. Their eyes are part of the tunnel. Cars is pretty messed up, isn't it? I mean, how much further do you think they'll go? Oh, hey, kids, I'm Lightning McQueen, and I'm on your willy! I was gonna pick Luigi for my playthrough here, seeing as, for some reason, he's faster than most of the other literal professional racing cars, and yet looks like an old shoe. In the end, though, I went with Lightning, because I think he'll kill me if I don't. Once the game itself begins, though, I'll be damned, it's actually alright. In fact, dare I say, this is a good racing game for kids and even for adults. No joke, I was totally ready to go into this and give it the mouth of Owen Wilson. Oh, that basic door, it got wow. But I just can't bring myself to. This here, this is a good game. It's not even vaguely the same as Cars 1 in terms of racing mechanics. This feels way more fleshed out and looks much more lively and vibrant with more tracks to race around that all look tons better than before. You've not only got a drifting system that's worth a damn, 
but also a load of new moves to use during the races that add a lot of risk and reward to what you're doing, and therefore makes every race interesting even when you're in front. You see, you have this new boost system down here that fills up whenever you take a risk and do some tricky stuff with the right stick. You can flick up to drive up on two wheels and make your steering very limited, flick back to drive in reverse and swap the left and right controls around, and tap A to jump up and over different obstacles and even jump off of ramps to reach shortcuts. Much like in Sonic All-Stars Racing, you can even do stunts in mid-air by flicking the right stick. If you can keep a good streak of these going without using one of the three mini boosts you can save up, once you get your fourth mini boost, you can then activate a massive boost which lasts for ages, goes really quickly and knocks out any other racer around you. You can even get more boost fuel by doing certain stunts through certain highlighted routes, and you can interrupt other racers doing their own stunts by smashing the right stick left and right while driving on the floor. But wait, that's not all, you strap! Because you also get races that allow you to use items and power-ups, missiles, oil slicks, and bloody machine guns! What happened here? Cars 2, of all things, arguably one of the worst 3D animated movies ever made, ended up with a good game. I'm sorry, news of the world, you earned that pun! That pun is correct! Recycling? No! This really surprised me, so well done, Cars 2. Which is something I never thought I'd ever say. Warning! High-level weapon in play. Mine! Okay, great, so what do we have next? Another Cars game. <laughs> it takes more than speed to become the ultimate racer. It also takes crack. So this game is the most modern that we have today. It's on the PS4 and starts with a TV show called Chicks Picks with Chick Hicks Dicks, where we get called out live on air to challenge another race car. And so, because we're live, we've got to accept it, otherwise we'll look like a poos. So naturally, in order for us to win against this guy, I'm going to pick Guido. And I kid you not, Cars 3 is the same game as Cars 2, but just better. How is Cars of all the Pixar franchises doing this? It's almost like these bad movies about multiple cars were made as an excuse only to make merchandise. Mm. And 12 year old me agrees. In Cars 3 you've got the same power ups, same good control, same stunts, same weapons and same turbo system. But now with loads more tracks that are way more visually varied, so many more types of race and a much faster pace that allows you to pick the next event you want to do in a drop down menu after each race instead of loading back to a main menu after every single one. Being on the PS4 it also looks pretty damn gorgeous to be honest. It runs smoother than the other games and I mean you can even customise the colours and accessories for the car you pick. I'm absolutely gobsmacked. The music is mostly filler background noise to be fair but other than that this is a bona fide keeper. Even the track design is great since there's like a million different ways to go, routes to take, shortcuts to discover and because of that, it makes the computer players an actual challenge, even on normal difficulty. I nearly lost plenty of races because of the added challenge here. I'm amazed, I've got to be honest. But like all good things, unfortunately, they must eventually come to an end. So, let's just move away from cars for one goddamn second, and instead take a look at Wall-E on the Xbox 360. <laughs> I'm just kidding, it's cars again! <laughs> oh look, it's more cars, they drive along and go... But now it's all about Mater, so it sounds more like... Who asked for this? What kid in the late 2000s was this desperate for a video game all about everyone's favourite character from the best Pixar movie of all time? Mater! I'll tell you who. A big old trollop. The first thing you see in this game is Mater himself with his face right up to the camera and his tongue sticking out. Remind me why anybody asked for this game? Oh, don't worry, I know. You want to know about this game? I'll tell you. It's Cars 1 again. Yes, I'm not pulling your jammies. This is the same bloody game as Cars 1, all the way down to the bony little finger. <coughs> same hub world, same objective markers, same races, same collectibles, except now we have missing sound effects for some reason. Disney, where dreams come true. The only things I can give Mater National some credit for are that firstly, you don't really play as Mater, so why do you have to scare me like that? And secondly, the controls and physics are a little bit better than the first game. You actually slip and slide around the dirt like a rally car this time, and the power slide actually makes you drift a little bit. There's a pretty useful tight turning button, there's more mini games, there's a recharging boost system, and the map actually shows you what events are around you and which ones you've already completed. However, this is still pretty mindless stuff. You race on identical tracks over and over again with barely any different stipulations. I'm sorry, but I absolutely failed to believe that this battered up old hunk of beef overtook a racing car at the starting line. Next you'll be telling me that these cars have organs.
Oh. Oh. They do. And if there's anyone out there who knows how to do the best oh. single lap around everyone oh. in town, it's Trollop. I'm a little bit concerned at all the adverts in this game, though. Shifty drug. What the hell do you think they sell there? Do you think they would help me leak less? Oh, hey there, car friend. <laughs> oh. Okay, yeah, I think I'm just about done here. I'm going to move on to the next game. Oh. oh, my God, I'm a monster truck. This is horrifying. What madman put this in the game? <laughs> okay, in all seriousness, we're done now. Not because there's no more games of cars, there's plenty of them, but I'm just sick of looking at all of them at this point. So why don't we move on to another slab of metal that's actually cute. Wally -E on the Xbox 360. Well, well, yeah, it's, it's, it's supposed to be Wall-E. The, the holographic sleeve on this thing is completely borked. Just look at this, though. It's like Wall-E exists everywhere and nowhere at the same time. Anyway, we start the game off with a lovely little cutscene, and then we... I got an achievement already for watching a cutscene! I haven't done anything yet! That has got to be one of the most pitiful participation achievements of all time. And I got one for pressing the left trigger in B-Movie. Oh, no, watch <laughs> out. Rex. What are you doing here? You're in the wrong game. Did you try and escape the zizzle? So far, this is looking like a pretty substandard platformer. Huzzah. But at least I can say that the controls are stupidly fun here. Not only can you roll up into a cube every time you jump and then hold the jump button to stay in cube form, which is a brilliant way to get around, especially downhill, and feels very, very fun to pull off. But you can also carry things and throw them with very snappy controls, and you get to carry three things at once. Oh. <laughs> Jesus Christ, wall! Did you- did you destroy the Earth? Was this your fault? What we have here, at least from what I played, was a linear puzzle and physics platforming game. And to be fair, it's pretty damn fun for a kid's game. Not only because the puzzles are pretty fun, but because Wall-E is an adorable little nugget to control around. I have to mention this role again. I can't describe how zippy and smooth this is to pull off. But that's not all we have. The platforming isn't too bad either, and there's a nice balance between exploration to find batteries and puzzle solving with grabbing the correct kind of object and throwing it into the correct place to make things happen at the correct time. Only problem is, yeah, the camera is not very good at all. Oh, stop looking at me like that, where's Wally? It's your game that we're playing. Oh. Uh, Oh god, I've angered him. No, I'm I'm sorry, Wally, please don't look at me like that. Don't, don't shake him, give me another chance. I do kind of like the visuals here though. It captures that sheer desolation and sprawling urban jungle atmosphere perfectly, even to the point of the dystopian nightmare consumerist pristine spaceship aesthetic being nailed later on. And if you like the movie, the amount of easter eggs and details are off the chain. I loved seeing the broken road signs named after the evil corporation by and large, and when the autosave came up and told me that it was sponsored by by and large, I giggled a bit. <laughs> you even get to play as Eve in her own unique section sometimes. You've got on rails tunnel flying while you blow things up with lasers and open world flying scavenger hunts and much like with Willy these bits control great as well just look at how responsive the controls are even on a slippy surface wherever you point the stick you turn no delay no slow turning the weight feels right I can do donuts and it's these controls alone that make the whole game pretty damn good to play my favorite bit though was here on the loading screen where it was moving along quite nicely and then froze for a second so then when it came back to life it had to quickly catch up with itself like Whoop! Hey. Good day, sir. I'm Michael Factory, and I'm here to sell you a door. I have a door. You knocked on it. Oh, yeah. Have a DS game instead. <gasps> oh! Ratatouille! Yes, everyone. The game based on the movie, plus the dump truck load of ports, wasn't enough for the sweet little rodent. He also felt like he needed an exclusive side game for the Nintendo DS. Oh, no. Oh, no. Is the whole game gonna look like this? Yes. Yes, it is. This is just horrendous. This looks like shovelware, not a Disney Pixar branded game. This is worse than a Ratatouille toddler's coloring book. And all of the characters' noses look like sacks. In fact, I was so distracted by the ugliness of this thing that I actually have no idea what's going on. I clicked on a new game file, I get given a loading screen, and then there's a mini game. No backstory, no instructions, what am I doing? Am I sticking the same ingredients together to make a good soup? But Remy is giving me the ingredients himself. Why can't he just wait for all the same ingredients to come up and then give them to me all at once. Ah, who cares? I figured it out at least, and I think I'm doing pretty well. Mm. Okay, so after restarting the entire game to see if I missed something, it turns out that this itsy bitsy teeny weeny not obviously at all -y question marky was the only way to figure out the basics of each mini game you'll be doing here, so thanks for making it skippable. Couldn't you just put the instructions up here? It turns out that after you make a lump of dump, you just tap the screen to grab it with your fork, so that's good. On to the next mini game immediately.
What? No bridge? No story? No main game? No. This is a mini game set that is only a mini game set. We're now slicing things with the stylus and. Th that's it. And then we're cooking things without moving any of the cookware. I'm sorry, what is this game? Why is it a game? What's the point of anything that I'm doing here? For two screens and touchscreen capability, this is one of the most restrictive and shallow games I've ever played. There's nothing here. You just jump from minigame to minigame with no scoring system, no linking segments, no rewards. You just touch things a few times while staring at this thing that looks like Thomas the Rat Engine. I mean, cooking <laughs> games on DS go together like bread and butter, right? It's touchscreen. It couldn't possibly be that difficult to make an engaging game, could it? Cooking Mama did this pretty well. Hell, there's even more complexity, variety, and content on the Mario 64 DS mini games, and they weren't even the standalone game. Peppa Pig on the DS offers you more than this. Peppa pricking pig. <laughs> so all I've got to say to you, yeah. game, is rata ta 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 <laughs> Hey, are you feeling brave? Well, that's good because I have a rifle. So by playing this game, I must ask. Am I brave or stupid? Well, I can tell you one thing at least. I've seen this bloody lamp bouncing on this bloody letter so many times now that I want it to fall through the floor. <laughs> brave is a linear platforming beat em up game that. Ah! Merida! Whoa! What happened to you? When did that dead cat get on your head? And despite how middle of the road it is, I think this is the best Pixar game I've played for this video so far. It's got elements of a twin stick shooter for your fast draw bow and arrow mixed in with basic combos and upgradable moves. And you can even unlock new moves to use like dodge rolling and different aerial attacks. Combine that with a few puzzles here and there and different elements for your weapons to switch between to take advantage of enemy weaknesses and level obstacles. And I genuinely am not fooling around when I say this is a really damn good kids game and I think you should- Ooh, this game has connect on it! <laughs> Excuse me, what is going on with this bollocks? Connect, help me please and answer me one question. Why don't you work? Brave on the Xbox 360 allows you to head to an archery range with the Kinect, and precision aiming a bow and arrow with dated and terrible body sensor motion controls goes just as well as you'd expect it to. If it doesn't register your aiming hand and where it's pointing, it doesn't register your drawing hand, and if you somehow manage to get that all working, letting go of the arrow is another thing entirely. What am I doing wrong here? Hit the thing, Brave! Hit the thing! You get three games to pick from here. Who cares? Piss off and leave me alone to cry. It doesn't matter because they're all the damn same anyway. At least when I'm even able to aim at the damn menu commands and make them go. When something even as simple as menu navigation doesn't work and screws you up, you know the rest of the game isn't going to work out for you. Brave as a kid's game itself is pretty damn good, but the Connect add-on is the tambourine player of the school band. It's irritating, nobody wants it, nobody likes it, and even if you get it working, you end up wanting to kick it in the face. Now, I've also heard through the grapevine that there's actually a Toy Story Connect game somewhere out there, but I don't have that, so I suppose I'll save it for another video. Won't I, Connect? <laughs> <laughs> you scamp! Anyway, while we're on the subject of Toy Story, here is Buzz Lightyear Star Command on the PS1. Merida looks like cup noodles. Before we get into the game, can I just say one thing? I never watched this show, but the movie I Buzz did. Lightyear of Star Command, as far mm -hmm. as a cheap spin-off goes, I really like. It's pretty funny, Me actually. Target the planet of widows and orphans! You fiend! There he is! <laughs> I knew that would get him. And appropriately, the video game tie-in is also making me laugh, but not in the right way. We pick our first mission and get treated to a phone call, which I honestly zoned out from because this dude just kept saying the same words over and over again. Get away, spot. 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 I think I'm going to the getaway spot. Oh, look, it's a scene from the show. That's pretty cool, at least. Lightyear could handle this one in hypersleep. Ooh, bye. So Star Command on the PS1 is a corridor running and gunning game, and when I say that, I mean that's all you do. You run, jump, and gun, with floaty as heck controls and one of the worst camera systems I've ever seen that can't be controlled. But there are a few other things you can do. You can collect hidden little green men for extra bonuses, you can pick up and collect credits to buy new upgrades and weapons throughout the level, and you can strafe left and right. But what is this? It's good to know that I'm now playing the video game adaptation of Disney on Ice. You've also got to fight bosses and 
arrest them. But I don't think there's much point arresting a dead body on fire. That's not all though, because what is this? Why, it's a time limit, because this is also a racing game too. Yes, in order to get to the boss of each level, you need to reach its get getaway spot before the time runs out, or beat them to the hideout to knock off a portion of their health with this thing that looks like a blue toilet brush. And this is great <laughs> whenever you find a shortcut portal or jet board, but terrible for looking around for collectibles and grabbing them. Not just the aliens, but the credits too, which you need to grab to buy the weapons you need to even damage the boss in the first place when you get there. And after all of this, the bosses usually amount to... Oh. Absolutely brilliant. These two stars of gameplay are at odds with each other constantly in Star Command. You need to find the hidden things and collect enough credits to get extra medals in order to progress, but you also need to do that while not running out of time, meaning potentially rushing by basically everything, and you haven't really got a chance to let the game itself or its level design sink in, so if you have to retry it, you don't really remember where the best places to go are, where the best weapons are, where the collectibles are, it's just really messy. It's not awful, but I wouldn't exactly describe it as fun, and it's not that difficult more just irritating. Not helped at all by the total lack of camera control and no weapon lock on what? what? Even when the levels do get a little bit more interesting like on Planet Flambe it doesn't give you breathing room to search around it or discover more interesting platforming or secrets because otherwise you'll game over from being too far behind. Check out level 3 here where I'm supposed to hit all of these bombs or else they'll detonate and destroy the whole level but I'm given a jet board really early on because of how fast this joker is so I ended up missing one of the bombs in the level as I was heading for a shortcut which I thought I was supposed to do, but nah, because I missed that bomb which was on the corner of the screen, game over. All because Star Command can't make up its mind on what kind of game it wants to be. And when I finally did perform everything correct on this level, I accidentally activated a power-up for Booster who looks like a giant beat to come down and smash everything, causing the bad guy to get ahead of me, which means that the level itself never pauses, which means if my countdown clock was running, I might have lost the level right there completely out of my control. Why does Buzz have a gun anyway? He uses a laser in the movie and he has one on his arm. Where is it here? And why does he sound like Joe Swanson? Stop right there, Creepazoid. So why don't we end this marathon off <laughs> with a quick look at Toy Story 3 on the 360, which, by all accounts, is one of the best Pixar games ever made. What? Yes, Woody, I know. I couldn't believe it either. <laughs> it opens up with this fantastic intro stage, playing like a mix of Crash Bandicoot-styled animal riding, Uncharted-style platforming, and Red Dead Redemption 2 train hijacking as we brutally murder a load of aliens by throwing them onto the metal tracks at 90 miles an hour. We also put a load of cows onto a catabot because they're old and I can't milk them anymore. By the way, guys, I also thought Woody was supposed to be all floppy, so whenever he runs into a wooden door, why does it sound like... After this segment, you're thrown into the hub world of sorts, and this isn't any old hub world where you just pick levels. It's a massive level in and of itself, set in an old western town that you are the sheriff of. With a million pieces of clothing to collect for your villagers, loads of treasures to find, tons of areas and side pockets to explore, gold coins to mine so you can buy more toys to help you collect more stuff hiding out of your range and unlock more mini games and different characters to control, and residents to help you so that you can unlock more stuff in order to customise the buildings and build more things to play within the town itself. You also get to toe punt all of the orphans. <laughs> Seriously, what is it with kids' games and being able to assault other kids? And look, you're even told specifically how to drop kick all of the children! <laughs> what is wrong with this game? And can I order more copies of it? Oh, looky here, it's Stinky Winky Poo Pants Pete. This is for all the trouble you gave me in Toy Story 2, you bastard. <laughs> Okay, so Bullseye was an amazing thing to purchase this early on in the game. Wanna know why? He runs and jumps really fast around the town, he can activate specific minigames only he can do which are very fun and give you a good layout of the land around you, and more importantly, he helped me find a townsperson stuck in a well. Oh, yeah. oh okay, well, we beat the mission of finding the guy by just looking at him. Hey man, I was told to come down here to find you, not get you out. But I suppose you look happy enough down there on your own anyway. <laughs> this mode here properly makes you feel like a kid again, playing with the biggest box of toys you can imagine. It's so much fun. And that's just the sandbox portion. The main story missions are alright too. Except for demon baby half face over here. <laughs> I don't think this is anywhere near as creative or replayable as Toy Story 2 on the PS1, and your movement options are much more limited, but for a game following the events of a movie and taking a few liberties on the side, Toy Story 3 pleases both those looking to go through a varied and satisfying action platforming adventure, and those looking to just take it easy with nice music and throw prospectors into shop windows, <laughs> so that you can give them a new haircut and make them leave looking like an angry jellyfish. For as unimaginative as what I'm about to say is, I truly believe it. 
This is like the ultimate toy box game. I would have loved this game as a kid, but now I'm an adult and completely miserable, so I'm gonna stop. Mm. At least I can do the one thing I've been desperate to do since the movie came out and smack Lotso in his stupid face. <laughs> and with that, this long Pixar journey has finally come to an end. <laughs> but what a ride it's been. Just like something you'd find at Disneyland. <laughs> I really do mean that though, because where most of the DreamWorks games I played were uh, down there, the Pixar games I played were all over the place, up, down and all around. Some were great, some were terrible, all in the same breath. And because of this flip-flopping quality, I can completely understand why they don't focus on movie tie-in games anymore. In fact, the most recent Pixar game I got was LEGO Incredibles, and that was a really good one. Not just as a LEGO game, but as a multiplayer action platforming game hmm. with puzzles to solve and lots of different things to do, and as a Pixar fan service game. So I think it's safe to conclude here and now that as a whole, I've been pleasantly surprised by a few places with Pixar games. It's been bad. My god, has it been bad. Most of this stuff I wouldn't recommend you touching with a 30 foot long pole, but I don't feel <laughs> as exhausted here as I did with all of the DreamWorks games I looked at in another video, much like how I feel about each of the studio's movies themselves. Well, see you later everybody. I've got to head out now because I've got Merida's hair in a cup for dinner and I don't want to watch another DreamWorks or Pixar film ever again. So what other companies can I rely on for 3D cartoons? Illumination. Oh, Jesus. Wait, there's a Minions game? Subscribe and hit that bell. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter. And where's my dinner? Special thanks to my top tier Patreon mm -hmm. supporters in the description below. Matthew Hubble, the classy... Uh, yeah, that's... Uh, yeah, Jesus. Yeah, there are some games in there that do look good. Some that really don't. And God, that one with... <laughs> The one with the inside the cars. Oh my god, that was just ugh, like horrific, dude. Like, what the freak? Like, ugh, no. Like, that was so gross. Like, what the freak? Well, I don't know which one. Was. Anyway, that's uh my reaction to the pitiful world of Pixar games by Cat Icarus. I will see y'all in the next one.